we should say something about the soil forming factors and the kind of processes that have occurred in the soil. Of course, this is a grassland uh, in a fairly dry climate, but uh, with, with times when the soil, of course, is moist and, and water does move right through the soil or, or leach the soil. And so when we think about uh, the basic processes of soil formation, one of the first ones we think of is removals, and that's materials that were once in the parent material and are gradually removed from the parent material and actually the constituents were probably leached away into the subsoil and perhaps even into the groundwater. And one of the, th the, the constituents that comes to mind when we think of removals is our salts, soluble salts, both those that were in the soil and soluble salts that might form as weathering products of some of the reactions in the, in the soil. These are fairly quickly leached beyond the root zone, so we can consider, consider that is one constituent that has been re removed. Another basic process of soil formation is our processes of addition, materials that have been added to the soil. And it's in this particular situation, uh, the, the main constituent that has been added to the soil is organic matter. And organic matter is made up mainly of carbon, but it also includes nitrogen. And so the two kind of key co components that has made this a soil uh, and have been added, and of course the reason organic matter is added to the soil is after plants or during plants growing on the soil, it's the residues from the plants that are the, you might say, the parent material or the feedstock for the organic matter. And in this case, we, we have a grassland vegetation so or, and organic matter. The addition of that organic matter to the soil, mainly from the, uh, the, the decaying roots of the grassy vegetation, has resulted in quite a lot of accumulation or the addition of quite a lot of organic matter to, the, uh, to this particular soil. So the carbon part, that's important because that gives a, a certain structure and so forth to the soil. But equally important are, <coughs> or is, uh, is nitrogen. Most of the parent materials have very little nitrogen in them, and so almost all the nitrogen that this ecosystem depends upon has been added from, uh, from the atmosphere in two ways. Directly from the atmosphere uh, during lightning storms and so forth, there's small additions, but more so and more important either by micro microbial processes or microbial processes in association with, with a certain group of plants called legumes. So the addition of nitrogen to this soil uh, is a really important, uh, important soil forming factor and one of the reasons that the soil was able to, sus to su sustain an ecosystem, and the, the nutrients that came into the soil, the nitrogen that came into the soil from the atmosphere. The other two basic kinds of soil uh, forming uh, processes are transformations and translocations. And maybe I'll say just a bit about translocations first. In this soil, in contrast to the, uh, the other soil that's in this landscape, the humic alluvic glycol, there really aren't many, uh, the, the processes of translocation are not strong. There has been some weathering and leaching or a downward movement of, of calcium carbonate from the upper part of the soil down into the subsoil, as we'll see later. Uh, but uh, almost uh, none or very little uh, translocation of constituents like clay, which are usually uh, translocated in a, in a soil in a much stronger uh, soil farming environment, you might say. In terms of transformations, materials changing from one form to another, once again, this is a not really a strong soil farming environment, and so we don't have a great deal of transformations as would be typical of perhaps a, a soil in the forest region or in comparison to soil of tropical regions, m much less transformations. But some of the things that do transform, for example, most of the phosphorus that this ecosystem depends upon was present in the parent material as a mineral called apatite, a calcium phosphate mineral. Well, over the course of soil formation, uh, most of the, of the phosphorus remaining in the soil is no longer as apatite. It's there because some of the phosphorus ions were taken up by the plants and became part of the organic matter. Some of it's in the organic form. And other uh, phosphorus that probably was also released by weathering is often tied up in complexes with, with iron and aluminum. So we see quite a lot of, of differences in transformation of phosphorus from the mineral appetite to a whole variety of forms. And, 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 and quite fortunately to a variety of forms that remain in the soil and continue to sustain this eco ecosystem. So I'll mention phosphorus. Another one we could mention when talking transformations is organic matter or the transformation that takes um, plant residues like we see being added to the soil and within the soil especially if we're dealing with root roots these materials are transformed into the dark colored uh, 
sort of mysterious material that we call humus. And it's a humus that stays in the soil for quite a long period of time, of the order of, of, of decades and hundreds of years. And so the transformation of organic residues to humus is another example of transformations. When we're considering a, a soil profile like we have here today, uh, it's really convenient to, uh, to consider the different factors that have, con that have contributed to or caused this particular kind of soil. And we call those the soil forming factors. And when we look at this particular soil in this landscape, I've already mentioned that the parent material, which is one of the soil forming factors, is a glacial till. That means that that glacial till was deposited, uh, deglaciation in this area was somewhere in the order of 10 to 12,000 years ago. So that puts the time dimension, which is another soil forming factor, on this particular site. So we've had a glacial till parent material and a soil that's probably existed for about 10,000 years. The, uh, another soil forming factor, of course, is organisms or vegetation. We've already mentioned that this particular area was a grassland. It seems to be, uh, there were, certainly was a time just after deglaciation when there may have been a spruce woodland here, but for the great majority of its time, it appears to have been a grassland. In terms of topography, well, this profile, as we'll talk about later, is a Northic or typical soil. And actually, although we're on a little bit of a, a bench and even a, in a bit of a runway here, it's a fairly level area in terms of the actual microsite. So there aren't a lot of topographical factors that have influenced the soil, and that's probably one of the reasons we see a typical soil here. It's not too thin because it's on a, on, a, on a slope or on a knoll. It's not over thickened because it's in a lower part of the landscape. A very typical soil where topography is not a huge factor uh, of soil formation. Uh, in terms of uh, the, uh, another factor, uh, and we often today, because most of our landscapes are cultivated, think of this, think of the influence of, of humans, of man on the soil. This soil certainly was cultivated for a period of time, and we see evidence of that in the fact that the the A horizon has a very sharp lower boundary, as we'll talk about later. Uh, that, that certainly influenced the soil. There may have been some changes, like phosphorus fertilizer added, what might change the, uh, uh, the, you know, the, the nutrient status or the fertility of the soil. But generally, uh, except for the fact that the soil has been tilled, we don't see a, a, a huge impact of, of man on this particular soil.